What is going on everybody and welcome to another episode. Now before we get into the actual fishing part, I thought that I would announce my giveaway winners real quick. Now if you guys haven't seen the video from a few weeks back, I kind of uh, did some unboxings, kind of explained some things that were happening in my life, and then announced the awesome custom Who Rags that uh, Who Rags sent over to me with my logo on them and everything, and I said that I would give five away to you guys. So, here are the five winners. We have Blake Canada. He commented, the bass in my profile pick weighs 6.15 pounds. Gregory Nichols, he posted Lunker. Adam Graham, he said, I need one. Andrew Reddy said North Chain or South Chain. And Colton Outdoors, the fifth and final winner, said, yo, that's my name. And so you guys are the five winners. If you won, either message me here on YouTube, um, on Instagram, or Twitter if you need to, but usually just stick to YouTube and Instagram. So with that being said, you guys can order the Who Rags if you didn't win, and I'm sure you guys, there's a bunch of you people that did not, and you still want to order one of these, they'll be 10 bucks. I dropped the price uh, down in the description below. I am a big advocate of protecting your neck and protecting your face from the sun, if, especially if you want to be fishing for the long term, and these things are an awesome way to do that. So make sure you guys order some of those to help me out with further adventures. Now let's get into the fishing portion. Well, what is up everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today, as you can see, I'm in a slightly different atmosphere. I'm outside. Uh, you know, in the college environment, you kind of have to improvise, and so we're kind of outside my apartment complex right now, hoping to find a, a cool new spot to do instructional videos like this. But today, I want to talk about the pre-spawn and how to catch bass in the pre-spawn. I got the opportunity to see some of the best pros in the world from the FLW Tour head down to my home lake, Lake Travis, and fish four extremely different days of competition uh, on a lake that I grew up on in the pre-spawn. And so this video is kind of, you know, if you, if you didn't follow along with the tournament, this video is going to be a, uh, an overview of how the pros caught their fish and kind of things that I learned about pre-spawn fishing, especially in deep, clear, rocky lakes. Let's get started. So let's start off this video with a little bit of a bass life cycle uh, lesson. So as you guys know, as us humans on the earth have four seasons, uh, summer, winter, fall, and spring, not in that order actually, but bass have four seasons as well. They have pre-spawn, post-spawn, summer, and winter. And so those kind of all blend together depending on what uh, area of the country you're in. But here in Texas, uh, it, it's pretty defined. We have a pretty, I wouldn't say a pretty bad winter because we don't have ice, but we do have a pre-spawn, a post-spawn, and a definite summer. So I'm going to kind of explain the pre-spawn today and how that works. So for you guys sitting at home watching this video right now, imagine that you are a bass. Now in the winter time, you have spent three, four, sometimes even five months under considerably colder water than normal, and for you guys that live up north, Minnesota, Michigan area, under ice. And so you are ready to get out, you're ready to start mating, ready to start feeding up, for the spawn time and so that's what we call the pre-spawn um, time period is when fish are moving from their winter patterns staying out deep not doing much feeding to traveling up shallow to find a female or find a male and mate with now two of the main forwards the bass are going to rely on in order to get a lot of quick energy and, and build up their muscle and their fat so they can go up and spawn is crawfish bluegill and shad now I know a lot of you guys live on lakes and that's awesome and a lot of this video is going to be targeted towards lake fishermen and boats, but if you guys are in ponds, these tips can apply as well. Now the top 10 FLW pros each did something different, which I think was a cool testament uh, to how you can actually catch bass in different ways during the pre-spawn, but I'm just going to highlight a few of them and a few of the techniques that really caught some of the bigger bass during the FLW tournament. One of those is a Carolina rig. Now if you guys haven't thrown a Carolina rig before, you probably should. The aspects of a Carolina rig are, are fairly simple. You want a you know, semi-long rod from 7.2 to 7.6. I've seen guys throw shorter and longer, but I like to stick around seven foot, three inches. Usually heavy action, on um, that way you can just launch the bait out there. And it's pretty simple. So you have your main line, which is about 17 to 20, and then your leader. I have 20 on here as well, just because I got lazy, but I usually stick down to 15 or 12 pound fluorocarbon. And a lot of guys are in debate on, on how long your leader should be. You really gotta test it out, have several different Carolina rigs out. Um, because the bass are going to tell you how long they want the leader and how much they want the bait floating. But that's the cool thing about the Carolina rig is that it's mostly a dragging bait. So you can put the weight right above the swivel, then have your line to your hook and your bait. So they are two separate things. They're, it's completely free swinging. So this is what touches the bottom. This bait kind of drags along behind it and just gets slurped up by any uh, hungry pre-spawn bass. So my favorite baits to use on a Carolina rig are creature baits. They can imitate practically the whole spectrum, but mostly bluegill and crawfish. So my kind of favorite creature baits right now are all made by V&M. It is the Swamp Hog, the Baby Swamp Hog, or the J-Bug. Now I'm gonna stick to the Baby Swamp Hog and the J-Bug. The regular Swamp Hog works, but I find that it only catches big bass. So if you guys wanna catch a whole myriad of different sizes, stick to the J-Bug or 
the baby swamp hog. But really, the way you want to work your Carolina rig is cast it out there as far as you can and drag. It is called the good old slow drag because that's what you're doing. You're dragging it. Now, I've heard guys hopping it as well, but the main way that I like to work the Carolina rig, especially with the creature bait, um, is by dragging it. And so those, those FLW pros on Travis, they were really able to find the slightly sloping banks where big female bass were able to push up on and feed up on deep living bluegill and deep crawfish um, before they headed up to spawn. And so these pros were fishing Carolina rigs in 20 to 50 feet of water. Now that's pretty deep for most of you guys that live in ponds, but I'm telling you, the deeper you go, that's oftentimes where the bigger bass are in the free spawn. And so take Mark Rose, for example. He was able to utilize a football jig to just cast way out there, catching five pound bass in 40 to 60 feet of water right up against a boat ramp. So guys, big fish will use big pieces of structure to feed up on in the post spawn. So kind of, that's the point of the Carolina rig is that is a, usually a big presentation um, to get those big pre-spawn bass. Now another way that I love to rig the J-Bug, Jacob Poroznik invented, if you guys couldn't tell by the J, it's on a wobble head. Now I'm a dingus and I actually don't have any wobble heads right now, but I will include a picture of a wobble head right here. Now, the cool thing about wobble heads is that the weight, like a football jig head, is free swinging from the hook. So your bait will be free to wiggle around on the bottom with the bait. Now Tommy Biffle invented the, hard, the Biffle hard head, it is an incredible bait. Um, free sponsor plug for him right there, but there's plenty of other hard heads out there. And basically I use 15 pound fluorocarbon, lose rod and reel, and uh, I like to stick to a 7.2 to 7.3. If you guys haven't been able to tell, and you'll be able to tell in my rod and reel arsenal later on this spring, I like longer rods. I'm not that tall of a guy, um, so I like to have a longer rod to set the hook and bring in more slack. So a wobble head is a great way, just like a Carolina rig, to crank it out there, or I guess cast it out there, reel it back in super slow and just feel across the bottom until that big fish picks it up. And kind of the last two baits that are incredible for lots of fish, so numbers and big fish in the pre-spawn uh, is a drop shot and a shaky head. And you may think, Tyler, you can't catch a big fish on a shaky head and a drop shot. Well, think again because Brian Thrift came in on day one of the FLW tournament with 24 pounds of bass. Five bass for 24 pounds. He had like two six and a half pounders, which is absolutely incredible. And so what he was able to do is find one of those sloping points with brush on it, because Lake Travis came up 40 feet and there's brush everywhere, and he was able to throw just a small shaky head like this with, I don't know what worm he was using, but I would use the VNM 6.5 inch trickster worm on just a standard football head uh, or round head shaky head. And so what's great about this bait is that you can cast it out there and just barely shake it, kind of move it along the rocks, weave it in and, in and out of bushes and grass, whatever you guys have, and it is an awesome bait to catch fish that are oftentimes more finicky um, or more hard to get to bite than a Carolina rig or a football jig bass would be. So that kind of wraps up the lake portion of this video. Now a lot of you guys don't have lakes near you or you don't have a boat to get on the lake and so you need some pond fishing tips for the pre-spawn. As I always say in my LTV videos and even videos here on my channel, almost every single lake tip can be shrunk down both physically uh, and metaphorically to fit into a pond. And so you can use these same exact baits, the swamp hog and the J-bug, that both imitate, uh, I'd say in a pond, more bluegill and crawfish. I think you guys have more bluegills in your ponds than crawfish. Uh, but bass still have to feed up, they still have to get shallow from the deep to spawn. And so you really wanna look for deep structure. Um, if you have something like a, a deeper or an eye bobber or any other kind of sonar with a kayak, that you can go out there and find any sort of structure in your pond, that is super prime. And if you know kind of the topographic, which is like the underwater mapping of your lake, that helps as well. And so if you know this little point on your pond uh, kind of slopes out and then goes down, kind of into a ravine and comes back up, that's most likely where those fish are gonna sit. It's right in that ditch um, or that drain as, as tournament fishermen call it. Uh, and so that's where you're gonna wanna throw your Carolina rigs, your drop shots, things like that. And oftentimes ponds aren't that deep, so Carolina rig is not really going to be the best bait for you. You probably wanna throw a bait like this or the trick worm on a Texas rig it's, just, it's a lot easier to get out of grass and get out of, you know, that snot grass that you guys have in your ponds. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I had a few minutes here in between classes just kind of sit down and, and teach you guys something. You know that's what I love about my channel is I love teaching fishing and I hope you learned something about the pre-spawn and how to catch bass in that area. Now, the cool thing about Texas is that I get to make videos on topics and seasons that the rest of the country, besides Florida of course, haven't even gotten close to yet. And so all you guys that live north of Texas, these videos are gonna apply to you from now all the way until May, sometimes for you guys up in the, uh, the Northeast region. So as always guys, everything is listed down in the description below that you need to know. So my PO box, 
Um, any sponsor deals you guys can get through my discount codes and of course any baits that I mentioned in today's video. I'm also going to uh, list down below the links to FLW's website where you can find uh, kind of the, the pre-spawn fishing tips and how the pros caught their fish on Lake Travis as I mentioned today. So thank you guys so much for getting me to 60,000 subscribers. It means the world. We'll be at 100,000 before we know it. So let's get there pretty soon. We'll see you guys next time.